Hello, welcome to my presentation, Conversants and Exemplars when preparing for a scholarly writing. My name is Seolito Rodriguez. What is the purpose of this presentation? Well, my topic for uh, my essay is, is Bitcoin a threat to traditional banking? Uh, before I start writing, um, I want to discuss what a conversion is. I'm going to identify my primary conversions. I want to identify interesting findings about my conversions. Uh, I have identified primary and secondary journals. I am going to state what my goal, my goals are. What are my objectives? What do I uh, intend to accomplish in in this paper? Um, I also want to define what uh, an exemplar is. I'm going to identify several uh, several exemplars that I'm going to use uh, as the basis for my paper. Um, I'm also going to outline in detail each exemplar. And finally, I'm going to identify effective and ineffective aspects of my exemplars. What is a conversant? A conversant is a specific article or book or a, a specific contribution to the list of scholarly works in your field. Active scholars write many statements about many things, but it is recommended that you isolate three or four written documents that are the most appropriate to what you hope to accomplish in your project. Primary conversions for my paper. Uh, here's a list of the works. Uh, that I have found that are the most appropriate to what I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, is Bitcoin a real currency, an economic appraisal? Bitcoin, how to regulate a virtual currency? Selling Bitcoin to the DC set? And the state of Bitcoin, regulation and radical transparency. And, and all of these um, are works, a peer review, uh, works written by uh, people, experts in the field, in the, um, I would say, in the economic field, the legal field, and the technology field. And uh, that's exactly what I want to accomplish in my paper, is a perspective from, uh, from the legality of Bitcoin, also the implication in the business and the economic world, and also, uh, the, the, of course, the government and the transparency of, of, of the thing. So uh, I did a lot of searching and I finally concluded that these are uh, some of the uh, conversions that, you know, more closely relate to exactly what I want to accomplish in my project. I, I found very interesting facts about my conversions, uh, about my topic, and I was really um, surprised. I was really happy. Uh, there's a lot of conversation going on. I, I, I have to admit that uh, even though I, I read a lot about technology and I am a technology professional, uh, this is a topic that I would say I would uh, I, I, I know the least and as a matter of fact is one of the reasons why I chose this topic but uh, uh, there were very interesting things that I found out for example that um, you can actually there are some colleges that are accepting Bitcoin as payment uh, here in the United States and abroad um, I also found that there is uh, some Bitcoin Boulevard uh, out of the United States in the Netherlands and actually there is one in the United States where most shops in that boulevard um, accept Bitcoin 
and uh, I'm, we're talking about small shops, not just the big, you know, uh, businesses, but small shop, shops, and and that was really uh, interesting and surprising to me. Um, I found out when the first transaction happened in Bitcoin, um, uh, the million dollar Bitcoin pizza, which is basically, you know, this guy who exchanged uh, a couple of you know thousands of bitcoins that he owned originally when the the bitcoins were worth very very little and um, to make a long story short if that person were to exchange those bitcoins he would be a millionaire so basically they were they would be worth like about 500 million dollars so uh, very very surprising at that time those uh, uh, bitcoins were worth like thirty dollars but if they were exchanged at today's rate, which is like about $500 a piece, imagine 2,000 Bitcoins at $500. So we're talking about a lot of money. Um, we're talking about, found uh, interesting about um, people trying to uh, cheat, you know, using Bitcoin when, you know, supposedly, uh, um, so even though, you know, there is a lot of transparency in Bitcoin, but also there are a lot of people that would try to find a ways to uh, to defraud people using Bitcoins. Um, we uh, found out that there are more Bitcoin users in Poland than in France, and, and why is that important? Well, because France it's uh, um, a richer country, and um, so you know for. I guess for some people this was a kind of like a little bit of a shock in there. Um, talked about the ghost bitcoins, which is basically you know people that uh, lost their private key and therefore they couldn't access the the, the bitcoins. So I, I actually um, lo some months ago I, I read a story about this guy that had invest had some investment in bitcoins and he forgot about it and. Uh, the prices of bitcoins went really, really high, and when he realized, you know, he he was that he had a lot of money. When he was looking around, he realized that he has thrown away the hard drive where his uh, private kit was a store, and and um, and basically his stock. You know, if you lose that private key, then you cannot get your money back. And again, just like this, a lot of interesting stuff um, about you know when the the largest transaction in Bitcoin and all that kind of stuff. So, but a lot of interesting uh, facts that I was not aware of, and, and that I'm pretty sure that uh, my converts would also be interested in. Uh, primary and secondary journals. I have uh, selected. Uh, the times.com and the computer world as my primary and secondary journals and uh, first of all because time is a very uh, well-known well-respected um, uh, journal and the same thing for the computer world I regularly read these two journals and um, I, I found that these are very appropriate for uh, what I want to accomplish in my uh, in my uh, in my project, and uh, there are uh, many articles, uh, you know, recent articles written about uh, Bitcoin, which is the topic that I have selected. So uh, I um, I found that these were two very good journals for my project. What are my objectives? What are my goals? What am I trying to accomplish in this paper? Uh, it is very important that when you are preparing for a scholarly writing uh, that you have some statements where you state your objectives. For example, one of my objectives is uh, I want to learn more about the current state of Bitcoin and explain how it works. Uh, I want to analyze whether Bitcoin is a real alternative and a threat to traditional banking. It's a question it, it, that I want to, uh, um, the people that read my work, I want the people to uh, um, uh, to understand that, to see that. I want to find out what business leaders in the government are doing with relation to Bitcoin as a, uh, a digital currency. So uh, these are my objectives and this is what I'm trying to accomplish in my work. When we refer to writing, uh, scholarly writing or any type of writing, 
um, it is not necessary to reinvent the wheels as the saying goes and actually this can be applied to many things in life um, so exemplars are basically published examples of work with similar objectives if you are going to write um, a scholarly work it is important that you find exemplars that are similar to what you're trying to write you're not going to copy the work I mean every person has its own perspective uh, when you write but you need to find out paper that are similar to uh, what you are going to do so that you have an idea how to uh, actually cover your work so I have identified here three exemplars that are very similar to what I want uh, what I uh, want to um, to accomplish uh, one of them is called uh, Bitcoin the economic case for a global uh, virtual currency operating in on explored legal framework um, the other one is Bitcoin in the future of digital payments and uh, finally uh, Bitcoin the Bitcoin revolution so these three works uh, I went through uh, the outline uh, I have to admit that I have not completely read all of these works yet uh, I just kind of browse through it but I looking at the outline looking at the context this is exactly the kind of work that I um, uh, in other words, these examples are similar to what I'm trying to accomplish. It is also important that you create a detailed outline of each exemplar. Obviously, um, you have to go through your examples very carefully, read everything. So what I basically what I did out of my three examplars, what I did was I combined um, the outlines and all of these uh, topics I am very interested in and I want to um, accomplish something similar to this obviously there may be other stuff that uh, I decide later on that I want to add but for example I want to cover uh, what is Bitcoin I want to explain in detail exactly what it is how does it work uh, uh, how about the security how, how secure is it um, how do you actually get bitcoins? Who's using bitcoins nowadays? And, and as a matter of fact, I was very surprised to find out that there are a lot of mainstream companies like Amazon.com, uh, Microsoft, Facebook, and a lot of other companies, both in the United States and in the whole world, that are actually accepting bitcoins. I, I was a really, I was really surprised about this. Uh, how about the uh, anonymity of, of bitcoins even though you know uh, this is one of the biggest things about Bitcoin but how how can it be so anonymous when initially you have to get bitcoins you, you, you need to write down your names you have to go to an entity you need to pay with it so uh, you know th that's one of the things that I want to really find out more about it um, Will Bitcoin become a major medium of exchange? Uh, Bitcoin growth rate, how is it growing? Um, will Bitcoin prosper? Okay, the inherent risks of, of, of Bitcoin. Uh, how about uh, theft and fraud? How can it be prevented? Uh, the lack of trust, because remember, in, 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 in Bitcoin, is a peer to peer network where basically you're going to be dealing with with the individuals where there's no centralization. Um, the economic implication of Bitcoin, what, what would that mean for the world and the banking system and, and what would it mean to me as a, as a normal uh, uh, citizen? Uh, transaction costs, the absence of a central monetary authority, what are the implications of that? Um, what are the government's interests in, in Bitcoin both in the United States and abroad? So this is um, uh, kind of like uh, you know the skeleton of all these works combined and again uh, some of the uh, the aspects of what I want to cover in my work effective and ineffective aspects of the examples that I um, that I found that I read uh, I think that they were all effective in explaining what Bitcoin is and, and how it works um, who's using it and, and who's not, uh, advantages and disadvantages, and, and all those things that I'm interested in. Um, 
in the other hand, I think that uh, they were not very effective in explaining exactly the anonymity uh, of Bitcoin. E even though all transactions are uh, made with uh, uh, cryptography and you know, anonymity is one of these big things, but it still is not very clear to me. I mean, you have to start one point. You need to register with someone. You need to get the Bitcoin. So uh, how about uh, IP addresses? How about it is very easy to track uh, through your ISP, your IP address when you make any kind of transactions in, in, the, um, in the Internet. So it, it seems to be that Bitcoin is only going to be for people that are uh, you know, technically savvy and that the normal user who's not really good at Internet uh, maybe shouldn't be using Bitcoin if they don't want to leave any trace. Those are kind of things that I don't think that any of this paper were very effective in explaining. Um, the legality of it is still, there are many questions. And uh, the adoption of this technology by the banking system, could, could the bank themselves use part of this technology to uh, do some of the things that, you know, customers are complaining, like, um, you know, transferring money, for example, from uh, one bank in the United States to a bank out of the United States. It, it's very painful and it costs a lot of money. Um, and those are things that people would love to do. I personally would like to do that. I would like to be able to transfer money from my bank in the U.S. to a bank in the, uh, in, in in my home country. Um, so anyway, so I think that some of those aspects are not very clear to me yet, and I think that uh, I want to do a good job at explaining exactly um, how these things um, work. All right, so we have come to the conclusion of this short presentation. Uh, what did I cover? Uh, I defined what a conversion was, identified primary conversions for my essay, I identified interesting findings about my conversions, identified primary and secondary journals, I stated what my goals for my, uh, for my paper, what they were, what is it that I want to accomplish, I define exemplars. I identify some exemplars that I want to use for my paper. I outline each exemplar. And uh, finally, I identify effective and ineffective aspects of my exemplars. Thank you for uh, watching this uh, presentation. I hope that you have found it interesting and that you have learned something. Thanks.